Hello there all, welcome back to EOS Acro. This video is part of the Rubik's Cube series and here we are continuing our understanding of how to do some repetitive tasks in Houdini. Also in this tutorial I've upgraded my Houdini version to 15 which is the latest as of now which has brought along with it a couple of extra nodes which are useful so we are also going to take a look at those. So let's get started. Okay guys, so now I'm here within the amazing 15th version of Houdini and uh, what I first want to do is show you a few things about the poly extrude. So if I drop in the new poly extrude node which has been introduced and reconnect that, I want this guy to be able to replicate all the things which we had in the previous poly extrude. So in the previous one we had selected a group which we got in from the group node and then we added a couple of transforms to that particular face and also made sure the front face is again outputted back into the same group. So the repetitive operation can take place. Now to do the same thing in the new poly extrude, I'll just go here at the top and here under the group section first select my group and then I have a gizmo here which can pull out the actual face but by default I don't actually have the transform handles. To get those I'll turn on the transform extrude front, add a little bit of rotation and I'm done. Next thing I want to do is also output some groups. Those I can find here at the bottom and I'll just tell that the front face has to be outputted into a group and again I'll give it the same name. So that's going to be select. So this node is now ready and it has all the operations I tried to do previously in this one. When I had first planned this tutorial on repetitive tasks, what I wanted to talk about next after the for each loop was the SOP solver. But in Houdini 15, they've introduced a few other ways of uh, doing repetitive tasks using nodes similar to the for each loop. So let's first take a look at those. So in the for each loop, what we first did is underneath it we had this each node after which we connect all the nodes whose operations we wanted repeated. So this time we have other nodes which do similar operations. So if I type in 4, here I get three different nodes which have the same name. First is a for loop, for each loop and the for each subnet. This for each loop which we had used previously has now been renamed to be the for each subnet and the two other operations are basically the same but the nodes themselves have different default parameters. For what we need right now I'll use the for loop. If I place them here in the network view you can see that this is a combination of two nodes. So the first node here is a place where the loop begins and the last one is where it ends. So anything else I connect between these two nodes will be what would be replicated the whole time. So because I want the extrude replicated I need to connect it between these two. So just to see this in action I'll connect this uh, group into this loop, I'll copy this extrude and I'll go connect it. And this time if I enable the display on this repeat you can see that the extrude is repeated. I can go back to the extrude, I can let's say change a few properties and you will see that everything is working just the way we expect it to. Also to change the number of repeats you can just come to the end operation here and tell the number of iterations you want. So I can change this iteration number to the number of repeats I want and immediately I have the whole thing. Now the uh, operation which is happening here is pretty much the same. The only difference is that instead of a subnet everything actually exists in the same context. Also we didn't actually have to put in all the parameters we had on the extrude like we did with the, this particular subnet. Here we have all the extrude nodes and all the operations we want in the same context so everything is a lot easier to edit and looks a lot neater too. So that's one way of doing repetitive tasks in Houdini which has been newly introduced in the 15th version using the for each loop. Now for looking at the next way of doing a repetitive task, let's take a look at the SOP solver. So for this I'll drop in the solver node and this particular node is just a subnet which has a dynamics network which takes care of doing the repetitive tasks. So I'll start by connecting it to my network and I'll copy the extrude we had from the previous section. Enabling the display 
I'll dive into it. And before I do, please take a look at the network address here at the top. When I double click on the solver, I just didn't go into the solver, but I went into the DOP network and there into the shape node. And here you can see that I have a particular node which is different in color and this node which is called the previous frame works exactly like the each node in the for each loop. So this particular node actually acts like the previous frame on which the operations need to be repeated. So I'll just paste in my extrude and connect it to my input. And now enabling the extrude display you can see a single level of extrude is applied. I can come back out to my object level and now on this solver I only have an operation called start frame which if I try to change my entire object is gone. So what this solver works on is the actual time. So what I would need to do to do the repetitive task is go forward in time. And as you can see I'm getting a blue line here in my timeline which signifies that there is some kind of a caching which is going on in the back end. As you can see I can easily go ahead and find that the entire thing is also animated in time. So the solver is taking care of doing some repetitive modeling works. But for our purposes, let's say we wanted this uh, model to have only about 25 repeats. I don't want it to go beyond this. To get something like that done, I could just go in and drop in a time shift node. This particular node just goes through time rather than the frame which is mentioned in the time slider. It actually goes and gives me the geometry as it is at any given specific time. So now because we are in the 25th frame, it's telling the frame is 25 because it has the dollar $ref function added in. I'll just go ahead Control shift left click on that so the expression is gone. So now the frame number is stuck on 25. This time if I try to move in time you can see the object does not grow. So the repetitive tasks are stuck at 25 sections. I can if I go back again to my solver again it's at a different stage and time shift a different stage. So time shift is a node I would use to stop the number of re repeats I want added using a solver node. So that basically brings us to the end of this particular video. We saw here how to do the same repetitive tasks in different ways. So the first way we saw how to do that is using a manual method where you had to go ahead and duplicate the same node several times yourself. The benefit of doing it this way is that you can go to any specific node and change what happens at that stage very easily. Next we saw how to use the for each loop. So here in the for each loop we have a subnet where we added the poly extrude node and that node basically gets the same operation done every single time we ask it to repeat. And to just have better control we added all the options of the extrude on the for each loop itself. Next in Houdini 15 they have introduced a new way of using the for each loop where all the operations I needed added can be added between these two particular nodes and they get repeated in the same context. So I don't actually have to do any kind of additional addition of controls on my nodes. Next we saw how to use a solver node, the SOP solver which uses dynamics as its backend to do repetitive tasks but this is frame or time dependent so we might have to use a time shift node to make sure our repetitive operations stop at a particular time. So these are different ways of using the same nodes which we have seen till now. But before I end this video completely, I just want to talk about the poly extrude node itself which they have introduced in Houdini 15 because it has a few options which actually make most of the things I'm trying to do here a bit redundant. So I just want to stop by showing you a little bit of that first. So here if I just come to my poly extrude and let's say I pull out this particular face at any level and rotate it and uh, if I want to add in a couple of divisions onto this you can see it gives me straight across divisions and the reason for doing these extrudes or these kinds of repetitive operations was for the organic extrude. Obviously this is an example of how to do repetitive operations but I wanted to use something which gives you some kind of a result. But in the new poly extrude 
After you have added in any number of divisions, you have an option for the spine shape. By default, it was straight, and uh, this is how it was always in the previous extrude nodes. But this time, you can tell you wanted a curved spine, which immediately makes the entire extrude a little bit more organic. And as you can see, it does the entire repetitive operations in a lot easier manner. Next, also you have an option to twist the node or inset it, which makes most of what I try to do a bit redundant because it's much more interactive and you get to know exactly where your final face is going to end up. So just want to show you that the poly extrude, the new one, kind of takes care of the extruding portion of repetitive tasks, but you can still use this method for something else which does not follow the same node. So just wanted to let you guys know about that. And that's it for this video now. As always, if you have any doubts, suggestions, or critiques, put them in the comment section below. I'll uh, see you in the next video, and I hope you guys are having a great time.